listening to The Sizzle on Iron Skillet Radio and Iron Skillet Television. You know what it is. You know who it is. It's The Sizzle here on Iron Skillet Radio, Iron Skillet Television. We are the hottest talk in the 219. We are the hottest talk anywhere. When you come for sports information, you're coming right here to The Sizzle. And you know what, Jay? I'm going to do it first. I'm going to throw it out there. Yeah. This is your time to subscribe to The Sizzle. If you have not subscribed to The Sizzle, make sure that you push the button. We have a new flashy button for you. All you have to do is go boop hit the button. Now you're subscribed on every platform, which means now you get all of this great information and content directly to your phone, email, to your server, even to your grandmother's house. Wow. We'll come there Grandma? And give you information. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Is she baking cookies? Hopefully. And a pound cake. Oh, now, nah, hey, hey, hold on now. I am a pound cake, a fan of the pound. I can get bribe for pound cake. I'm mm-hmm. telling you right now, mm-hmm. right now, good pound cake, you could get anything out of me. Well, yeah, close to it. Well, you know what? That's all we need to know, DJ Sizzle, uh, <laughs> that you are DJ Pound Cake, too. Hey, you know what? Hey, we're, we'll be at Hook and Reel uh, Sunday night from mm-hmm. 7 to 9.30, and if you bring me a pound cake, <laughs> I'll play you a song. Oh, well, let's start there. Ooh, bring me a pound cake and I'll play you a song. I don't know if that'll be the title of this show, but I do know what the title of the show should be. Yeah. What are the Bears going to do? Nobody knows. Not even Ryan Pace. Yeah, Ryan Pace. That should be close. the title. Not Ryan Pace has no idea. So <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to find some good things to plug in here. All right, Jay. 20th pick. Uh, barring that Ryan Pace somehow mortgages the rest of the future of the Bears, yeah, as bleak as it might be, and move somewhere into that eighth pick. Let's say, <laughs> wait, he, stop. How? How did he get to the eighth pick? With well, what? If he, <laughs> if he trades away every first round pick for the next 15 years, it could happen. <laughs> and when you talk about Ryan Pace, it might happen. Yeah, might happen. The, the, yeah, then he's gonna, then he's gonna take Mitchell Trubisky. Yeah, well, Mitchell Trubisky <laughs> part two. Let's look at that because we haven't heard that the Bears are seriously looking at any of the top talent linemen in this draft. Now, if they pick a guy, it might be by blind faith where they just go, all right, we're going to pick him. But you haven't heard them connected in any way. They haven't been to any camps where you hear about them looking at linemen. But what you keep hearing about is them looking at – quarterbacks and quarterbacks number one they can't obtain um if you're going to justin fields workouts something might be wrong it might be a problem in denmark because you're not going to get justin fields even if he does slip he's not going to make it to you and even if he makes it to you he's going to get killed you know you know the the equivalent of the bears going to go watch justin fields pro day is like me watching a beyonce video you never go. <laughs> you, you can sit there and hope, but you're never going to get her. You know what I'm saying? It makes it's ridiculous. And I think you're absolutely correct on the Bears and this offensive line. They found Sam Mustafer last year, right? And they put him out there, and he played decent. I think they're going to try to run it back. I think they're going to put Cody White here back out there. They're going to stick Daniels at the other guard. They're going to figure out it. they already signed a tackle or two. And I think we're not going to see a big splash in the draft about these offensive linemen. I don't think we're going to do it. I think he's going to sort of stay pat. I, I keep hearing them talk about day two quarterbacks, the prospects, the Kevin, the Kellen Mund, the Davis Mills, Kyle Trask, especially Davis Mills. Yeah. I keep hearing about their affinity for the Stanford thrower that obviously Jay, he's about three seasons off, even from being the backup. He might be a a four year away from being a starting quarterback. Well, you've got the greatest minds that have ever been brought together are on the bears offensive uh, (laughs) meeting room they, they literally had to add on an annex to the Bears' offensive meeting room to handle all the coaching czars, drop-back pass gurus, spin rate uh, calculators, everybody else they brought in there 
to fix this quarterback situation. The problem, the only hope the Bears got to do is pick, is, is get a quarterback at 199 and hope <laughs> that he turns out to be something. Look, let me tell you something. This is another situation that the Bears have got themselves into because they started the bus and then they ran out in front of it when they threw it in drive. All right? If you are going to miss on your quarterback, then keep missing on your quarterback, right? Mm -hmm. You would have been better off running Mitchell Trubisky back out there again, back running out there again, and taking your money and putting it back in either to your offensive line or into your defense, and let's see if we can get this guy serviceable. But you paid all this money. You got $30 million stuck in backup quarterbacks right now. So you're going to go and get another quarterback on a rookie deal. So now you basically you got $20 million. What are you going to do with Nick Foles? Because Andy Dalton already said he's a starter. So we're carrying three quarterbacks. We're going to have $36 million of quarterbacks sitting there on, on a bad football team. I just don't understand what the thought process is right now. I really don't. Here's the biggest part about this whole situation. I don't think Ryan Pace knows. Mm -hmm. I think he got. Mm -hmm. I think he got caught um, with his eyes wide shut with this Mitchell Trubisky situation. I really do. I really think they thought Mitchell was going to pan out, mm -hmm. and Matt Nagy bailed on Mitchell Trubisky. I look, Mitchell Trubisky is would be a serviceable quarterback in the right hands. You gotta wrap your defense and offense around Mitchell Trubisky. You should have built your offense around Mitchell. Do what he does well. Look at Lamar Jackson. I'm not saying Mitchell Trubisky is Lamar Jackson. I'm not saying that, right? But look what they did up there at that Ravens offense. They built that offense around what Lamar Jackson does well. Now you saw last year Lamar Jackson. Uh, wide receivers and tight ends couldn't catch a cold on a zero degree day uh, in Chicago standing on the lakefront. They couldn't catch anything out there. But you looked at this guy who became the NFL MVP because they, they revamped this offense around what he does well. Now, am I saying Mitchell Trubisky was going to be the NFL MVP? Absolutely not. But what I am saying, he could have been a better quarterback. You saw physically, he could run it a little bit. You saw he could throw it if he could put only half a field. Why let this guy get away for two and a half, three million dollars, and you brought in ten times as much money on two quarterbacks who one of them already showed you he's not better than Mitchell Trubisky. The highest paid quarterback on the Bears right now has already showed that he wasn't better than Mitchell Trubisky. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the, the question is, for just not just Pace, but for any GM, what do I do to build my team? Where do I have to start it? I have to start it at my lines. That should be the first thing you say. I need to start with my lines, defensive lines, offensive lines. But the next thing that has to be done is I have to get somebody who's the head of the ship. The captain of the ship would be my quarterback. If you're going to make the investment you made into Mitchell Trubisky, from the onset, you trade up to get him, you start putting pieces around him, then just keep that train going until you can get yourself in a better position, till there's a better player that comes out. And to your point, Jay, you see right now, neither, none, or anybody in the Bears quarterback room is better than Mitchell Trubisky right now. Right, absolutely, absolutely. It, it should be stated no one is better than Mitchell Trubisky right now. Was he great? No. Was he serviceable? I see. This is the thing. Everybody keeps going on. Oh, you know, Mitchell Trubisky, he's a very bad quarterback. Nobody wants Biscuit because he sucks. No, I didn't say that. No one said that who watches the game. No one who knows the game. No one who understands the QB position says Mitchell Trubisky cannot play quarterback. He can't. But to your point, it has to be a specific quarterback. And you brought a guy in who was a quarterback. Okay. All right, Jay. So here's the thing. Yeah. You got all these guys sitting in their, their offensive room, right? 
But your head coach is supposed to be a offensive guru. Yeah. He's he's the king of offense. He understands, but it only seems as though he understands one system, and that's the system he makes and he puts together. So is he really a guru or just a dude who calls plays from a set playbook? I think, look, all these guys are great when you have guys who can execute your game plan. There's very few quarter, uh, very few quarter, very few coaches who can take not a mediocre team, an average football team, and make them play great. Mm-hmm. You still need the players. The problem with the Bears is I think Ryan Pace thinks he's already got the players. You got Allen Robinson still there. Mooney hasn't been moved yet, so I think he's going to end up staying. Then you went and got Desmond Trufant. So you're looking at this whole situation going, I think he's already built the team that he wants. Here's a question. I don't know who hates Kyle Fuller <laughs> in Hallis Hall. Is that, Somebody does. It's a Kyle Fuller contract. That's what it was. So with the 20th pick, if they're no premier lineman, they're going to get cornerback. Yep. Would they go and get a cornerback? Absolutely. I think that's what they're going to do. I think they're going to go get a cornerback to try to replace Kyle Fuller. They're replacing that $20 million. That's what it is. That's what they're doing. But you had Kyle Fuller. Why replace something? See, we talk about, you know, it's funny. We just talked about that with Billy Donovan in the last segment. When we talk about good coaches and great coaches. But I've never seen a great coach without great players. Right. The greatest coaches have always – you see, even with Phil Jackson, when he went to New York as an executive without good players, it was a disaster. It was a Trevor Sham Ockery. It Ooh. was horrible. Horrible. And that might be the reason why Roy Williams retired. Because you just <laughs> – you, you don't have great players anymore. Absolutely right. Hey, you, and on that note, you are absolutely – these guys hate that these, these kids can go into the portal now. After a year. Because they can't go and just threaten them to sit them on the bench and let them rot. A kid can go now, hey, screw you. I'm going somewhere else. Yeah, I can't just hold your check and then you think, you got to come back to me to get your check. So so now now those guys have to figure out how to appease these kids. It's AAU basketball in the NCAA now. You know what I'm saying? It's the same exact thing. If I don't like the way – that's why these kids don't play defense that well. That's why you saw a great defensive team like Baylor put it to Gonzaga because they had a whole bunch of kids who were willing to play defense. Like every once in a while, you go to an AAU game and you see a team out there who's bought into defense and they shut teams down because mm-hmm. other teams are just not used to playing defense. Well, it's, it's the same situation going on here. The <laughs> – the Bears are, are 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 really in a situation where Kyle Fuller made all the sense in the world because he locked down half of your defensive backfield. The other side of him, too, now he was developing as a player. Now he was becoming a hitter. People didn't want to come across the middle with Kyle Fuller because he might lay you out. We saw him do it. He was timing people up and not getting flagged. You had a kid on the other other side, Jalen Johnson, who can run, who can defend, but he wasn't going to tackle anybody. But we've seen, no, we're and not he saying really can't tackle anybody, right? Not yet until he gets that show. He has a history of shoulder issues, right? But we saw, and I'm not, I'm not saying comparing him to to prime time. I'm not comparing him to prime time. But we saw what a good cornerback can do if he's got the speed and the closing ability. We see that he can defend it there. And Jalen Johnson was defending passes. He doesn't have to come up and lay the wood on everybody. Like you said, he's got the bad shoulders, but he can defend. Now you're going to ask a guy, because if I'm playing, if I'm playing the Bears right now, we're running over to Jalen Johnson's side because we know he don't want to tackle. So we're 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 running over there. And so now, because we don't have to worry about, we don't have to worry about Kyle Fuller. So here, I mean, I don't know, man. It, it, it's, it's like Ryan Pace has found himself with the blue pill and the red pill. And he took them both. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he, 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 he wanted to stay in reality and he wanted to go to Fantasyland at the same time. 
you know, <laughs> and he and he's and, he, and he's stuck somewhere. You know, he's with he's 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 with Alice in Wonderland, but they're over there eating Subway. You know, <laughs> okay. that's it. That's it. You've you know had too much. It's too much. Too many. Too many times you've done it. You've done it already. So listen, we're gonna wrap it up here. So we'll say that the Bears have no idea of what they're gonna pick, and it's probably going to be a corner. It's gonna be a cornerback. Western corner. It's going to be a cornerback. Guaranteed he's going to be a cornerback. It won't be a quarterback because they can't get one. Unless right. they wait to draft pick 199. Then they're going to get... Oh, Tom Brady's already picked. Oh, well. well. Hey, get ready for it. The Bears, they're going to get a back. Just not a quarterback. Wow. You heard it first here on The Sizzle. You know what it is. You know who we are. We are The Sizzle, the hottest talk in the 219. We are the talk of the 219. Make sure you like and subscribe, and we will see you on the other side.